Welcome, uh, Mr. Patanjali. We spoke very, very briefly last week uh, when you when you jumped in at the tail end of uh, an earlier discussion that we had uh, previously. And uh, General Chaturvedi, pleasure to electronically meet you and looking forward to meeting you in person. Now, uh, very, very interesting. This has been a great learning experience for me. I've uh, learned a lot. I, if I can use a pun here, I'm very green when it comes to green matters. So. So I think uh, I think I will I will become less green on green issues as we go forward and as I, I listen to both of you who are clearly extremely inspired and uh, nature obviously brings you an abundance of joy and it's palpable and we can feel that and we can see that so what you're doing is is phenomenal and uh, and extraordinary in so many different ways uh, you've actually given us a taste of the serenity of nature uh, for many of us some of us who live in this jungle called Mumbai. It's, it's refreshing to see some of those slides. And I think both of you will be amply qualified to uh, organize eco tours. You know, it can be the Patanjali Chaturvedi eco tour, <laughs> can be, which can be organized. I'm sure Gayatri will take care of that. A um, couple of, you know, a couple of quick things. I, a uh, couple of things that struck me. One is, of course, getting the corporates involved. And I think, uh, I think we can do that. I think it comes down to a matter of, um, uh, when you're dealing with capitalists, it, it, it boils down to a matter of helping them understand and getting into their wavelength and getting them to understand the return on investment uh, from their perspective, whether it's on the CSR side or on the marketing side or any other side. And I think, uh, I think that can clearly be done. It's a question of um, engaging champions like you uh, to, to help us uh, go further down that road. Um, the, the, on the question of agri-land, uh, while I am not fully informed on this, I know the question came up a little earlier as to the possibilities of acquiring and, and getting a, a loan for agri-land. I think the answer is yes, uh, but but I think we, we can look into that. Uh, Gayatri, that's something that we can sure. certainly explore further. And and uh, and I think it's a very valid question and I don't see why not. Uh, so those are the two comments, two things I just wanted to share with you. And my last point is that, you know, the healthcare industry is going to be very depressed after this. If, if anyone from the healthcare industry participated in this conversation, uh, they're going to feel very threatened and very depressed because, because of the uh, extraordinary benefits that, that nature has to offer uh, over, over many of the other man-made cures. Um, with that, I will, I will wrap up and we will, of course, speak later at some future stage. Thanks, Gaj. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Mesh. Uh, so here we have somebody... Uh, Rama. Rama. Rama Goyal. Yes. Yeah. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Audible. Okay. Stop. Right. So, okay. So, I, I've been to uh, Patanjali's farm myself. She's and my batmate. <laughs> uh, she's, yeah, we were, we were together in, in, uh, we were way back, probably 40 years back or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it's quite an amazing uh, thing that he has done. And uh, it, um, I mean, I it kind of reminded reminds me of um, what I learned in school in the geography classes of these rainforests. You know, we heard about these uh, tropical rainforests with multi layer, you know, multi level, multi layer kind of um, multi level trees. You know, uh, at different heights. So it reminded me of that very much. But uh, just to come back to the discussion that we were having, uh, uh, first of all, Major Chand Chaturvedi, I've heard so much about you from Patanjali, so it was really, really good to meet you. You uh, know, yeah. You. And um, of course, I was hoping to meet you in person, but anyway, it's virtually <laughs> better than <laughs> at all. Yeah. Now, you know, uh, we were talking about uh, the CSR funding. Uh, I mean, uh, you know, it's all right. It's a group of a group of us people. Who are like-minded people are talking about it, and you're creating a, a kind of an ecosystem in some ways where you know we all concern people and we get together. But I think to really take it at a bigger level, we have to somehow, of course, get the corporates involved and get I think the government also involved at some level, because uh, because I, I feel that you know for example like we talked talk about CSR funding, now. There is a certain portion of, uh, you know, there's a mandatory for all, all corporates. So, and now with this, especially with COVID-19, uh, and with the government coming up with new kind of proposals, you know, so recent, <clears throat> recently, um, 
and with this emphasis more on you know forests and um, things along the Ganga, for example, I think that's one of the proposals also they've made. So a certain portion of the CSR funds could be, I mean, this is again a government policy. I mean, that's not for us. Uh, it could be kind of uh, mandated towards, you know, kind of make a, some green kind of uh, thing, you know. And for example, even agroforestry could be could be made a part could be made a part of uh, the CSR activities. I think so that more corporates could, you know, would want to get into it. So that's that's one thing. And uh, secondly, you know, uh, Mr. Chaturvedi, you were talking about the Ganga. Now, you know, in our research with Patanjali, um, we found that vetiver uh, along the rivers is a fantastic thing for, you know, keeping for soil erosion. Um, and it's been uh, done in many countries all over the world, in many parts of the world, especially in Southeast Asia, where they do these rows and rows of vetivers. And that binds the soil. It prevents the soil erosion, uh, prevents the um, uh, pollutants from getting into the river, and also generates water. So that would be a really fantastic thing along the along the river, and to create this riverine buffers, you know, so have trees along the rivers. That was that's another thing. I think we also discussed that Patanjali and I we discussed that with the Niti Aayog vice chairman. So, but uh, we haven't really taken it forward. <laughs> He's a brilliant writer. <laughs> keep saying we'll do it, but you know, we, we just Raba, uh, haven't been able to do it so far. Can I come in? Yeah. But, please, please. Uh, Rava, uh, I, mean, I think you made uh, some uh, very, very uh, nice point uh, about uh, uh, vetiver. You know, when I mentioned uh, stabilization of uh, a portion of uh, the bank of Ganga, it was done, uh, it's been done purely with the uh, vetiver. <laughs> and, you know, uh, it was planted before uh, the monsoons and uh, it uh, you know held the uh, uh, banks uh, uh, you know in, during the monsoon you know when it was in full flood so that is the kind of efficacy of uh, vetiver and just to share with uh, uh, all of you you know uh, we had uh, also interacted with the ministry of surface transport yeah. and uh, they were uh, very keen that they give us uh, you know the stretches of uh, Roads. the highways and uh, we had again proposed that we'll use these slopes. You know, most of these uh, highways have been raised and made, you know. Mm -hmm. So instead of uh, cementing them, you could use uh, the vetiver uh, to hold uh, or bind them as, as Rama has brought out. Mm -hmm. And again, the proposal is with them, you know. Uh, <coughs> again, net uh, of state uh, with surface transport. And uh, again, we had, you know, uh, met the officials also. And they're very keen uh, that we get it through. But mm -hmm. as you're aware, the you know the wheels of the government uh, of, uh, move uh, yeah. extremely slowly. So uh, uh, one has to persevere. That is what I've been telling uh, Gayatri also that you know, uh, one doesn't have to give up. You know, one has to uh, persevere. Uh, I'm sure there'll be some light at the end of the day. <laughs> Well, just small uh, thing. Hello, Chaturvedi. Just uh, two more questions to you from somebody. Her name is Varsha, and she has been constantly pinging. So. If you could quickly answer them because they are yeah, kind please. of related, yeah. So, with all the efforts for cleaning Ganges on its way, how would you rate these steps, and how long do you think it is going to take before something concrete and long term is achieved? As in, we know how the Janta still does not shy away from putting the last remains of garbage in the rivers. So, that considered, uh, what is your opinion on the timelines? Uh, uh, you know, uh, Varsha, what I want to say is. Uh, that, that is not very bad. Yes, uh, you know, uh, there, there are issues. We, we still, you know, uh, pollute uh, our rivers. We uh, throw our things out on the road. Uh, but my, uh, you know, sincere belief also is that as Indians, we are not very bad people. You know, uh, if, we, if we are told, we listen. Majority of us. I mean, you know, uh, uh, thing, uh, the ecosystem differ from place to place. But this is my belief, you know. Uh, that we are patient, we, we you know we, we don't uh, we are not very aggressive by nature, and we tend to listen. And the uh, um, major uh, the the bigger issue is these affluents, the affluents coming in from the uh, factories. They uh, are seventy percent of what is there, you know, right. and uh, uh, to stop them from coming in uh, is a major issue because you know they have to install sewage treatment plants, which cost them money. So, uh, you know, they uh, try to uh, 
you know, either stall them and then make them defunct or, you know, may, may, uh, get the affluence to the uh, flow directly. Right. Uh, so, uh, and of course, the uh, population pressures are there. Uh, but let me also confirm to you that, you know, uh, uh, at uh, all these places, uh, you know, at uh, Banaras and Allahabad, the local the administration also has some make, made some arrangements where you can you know put in a, uh, uh, you know uh, the flowers etc that you want to uh, put into the ganges in one place and then they are collected and, and removed so such initiatives are there uh, it will take uh, time uh, i feel that in case uh, we are able to address the affluence coming in uh, in a meaningful manner i mean if they, if we make that 0% we will not have uh, uh, so much of an uh, issue. Now, you know, you, you must be seeing uh, pictures of, you know, uh, clean Ganga, uh, clean Yamuna in Delhi and clean Ganga in Banaras, you know, and uh, people swimming and, uh, you know, enjoying themselves. So, uh, why is it so? This is more because uh, the uh, factories are not uh, working. You know, the affluents are uh, not really uh, coming in. The second point is about the flow. You know, uh, uh, what happens is we need more water and uh, when it gets uh, stagnant, uh, you know, and then uh, it uh, you know, gets uh, polluted more. Otherwise, you know, uh, you, you see, you, you, know, you, uh, you wash your face and then it'll, it'll go, you know, the water will take it away, you know. Uh, so, uh, it is a system of cle uh, cleansing itself. So, I feel that um, all things going correct, uh, we should be able to have a clean Ganga by 2024. Uh, if all things are going correct. You know, even NMCG, let me confirm to you, is uh, trying its uh, best, yes. you know, the way it can, you know, as a government body uh, to clean the Ganga. So, another question, uh, as a follow-up to the same thing is, do you think we should do something for Yamuna too? Uh, she says that she's a Delhi resident and she has seen how the river has become a dump, literally. And what do you think that we as citizens could do other than just spreading the awareness bit? Okay, uh, so... Uh, uh, I mean, say this, uh, Varsha has asked this question. Yes. Okay. Varsha, what I want to tell you is that, you know, uh, we also felt very, very concerned. Uh, we were about there, you know, to address uh, Yamuna also. Uh, I'll take it in two parts. No, one is uh, when I, I mentioned to you that uh, uh, the uh, Jal Shakti uh, Ministry wants to raise uh, four more uh, Saji Kota's forces. Uh, so, uh, when we were uh, in discussions with them, uh, they said, why not? We, we need to address the tributaries also. Uh, I said, absolutely. We, we need to address the tributaries because finally Yamuna also is flowing into, uh, you know, uh, Ganga uh, uh, at Allahabad. Uh, so, uh, then we looked at Delhi and then we realized that Delhi is a very complex issue. You know, there is the Delhi state. Uh, the uh, DDA is supposed to be, uh, you know, uh, responsible for this stretch uh, in uh, uh, Delhi uh, of Yamuna. You know, so we got in touch and we, and we you know, uh, again made a plan uh, as to all the nalas we mapped, we uh, told them they will, you know, uh, use these measures, uh, clean up uh, the water which is uh, coming into and then we, we got uh, against the wall. In fact, the forest minister of Delhi, I forget his name, uh, he was keen, uh, you know, because we have an eco task force here in uh, Delhi in Bhati Mine. So, he had visited and, you know, uh, the CO had briefed him and he, he, was, he told him that we can address the Yamna also. And finally, uh, uh, you know, the court, uh, the Delhi High Court told uh, uh, DDA, you know, uh, that uh, you better uh, you know, stop encroachment and uh, uh, get the, uh, you know, they passed strictures uh, that you start looking after the Yamna. So they contacted us and uh, we were gung-ho. I said, you know, we'll, we'll do it and, you know, uh, promise them everything. We will, you know, uh, uh, start working before we are able to raise a task force. We'll put in existing manpower and all that. And thereafter, they turn around and said, "No, no, we just want you to ensure that you know uh, uh, people don't encroach the, uh, you know, the uh, Ganga, uh, sorry, the Yamna uh, banks." Uh, so you know, uh, uh, what I want to say, Varsha, that you know, uh, it is quite a, uh, you know, complex issue, and. Uh, uh, awareness is one thing definitely uh, that you can do and you can uh, actually voice your opinions that is uh, the good part uh, today uh, the of the media you know you can write uh, to the prime minister you can write to the chief minister you can write to the uh, chairman of the uh, dda and and, uh, and show them uh, 
you know that it is uh, so simply it can be done uh, maybe it may you know spark some thought maybe it may you know uh, galvanize uh, you know some minds uh, uh, to do this so, uh, so uh, just it is pertinent for us to mention it here varsha and all other people who are having this question about what citizens could do so uh, actually project prakriti is actually meant to address that we have already written to the prime minister we have written to niti ayog we are trying to ensure that all relevant bodies do participate the state governments are in uh, discussions we are already in touch with the karnataka government uh, we are already in touch with the delhi government so we are just trying to build the bridges and here it is going to be the citizen participation which is going to strengthen this initiative so if you really want your cities to be clean please join hands with us and we will take this voice of yours uh, you know have some effect so there is uh, there are some more questions but uh, since we have three people already here so chatura she wanted to ask something and we have uh, andy and we have rama goel so uh, why don't you ask uh, chatura and then we can pass it on to andy andy had raised some question yeah. while we were talking but i couldn't uh, take it then because it got deleted he had a question about csr so andy just hold on and uh, after chatura you could ask uh, yeah can everyone hear me Yes, yes, please. Yeah. Uh, hi, I'm Chatura Vishwanath. I'm from Bangalore, and um, it's an honor to interact with uh, Patanjali Sir and Major General Chaturvedi. Um, I, I just, uh, I had the question about uh, taking loans. So I, I wanted to know what kind of a policy change has to come in place for a bank to sanction a loan uh, for creating a forest. and uh, the second thing i wanted to ask is um, uh, patanjali sir when you started out creating the food forest um, what kind of challenges did you have and and at what point did the forest actually become self sustainable yeah very good question uh, chatra uh, two limbs to it as mahesh uh, just pointed out it's a, it's, a, it's a for those who are um, willing to uh, start a career Uh, yeah, uh, for those who want to uh, take this as a career to raise forest, there should be some um, institutional funding, whether it comes from the banks, whether it comes from the NPFCs, whether from the CSR. All these uh, can be explored. It's a very good idea. Yes. Number one. Number two is actually it is now uh, with the some more than almost close to two decades of uh, doing this. i feel uh, absolutely confident that uh, in the year 1 it is more productive than any other form of agriculture that you have known because uh, you know there are some annual um, uh, crops and there are some uh, perennial crops then there are some which would take a little bit more time 3 years so to give a concrete example those who are growing turmeric let them grow turmeric with uh, tuar Uh, they support each other um, uh, you add uh, moringa uh, tree which is now the super food please for god sake don't uh, cut the head of the tree which most uh, farmers are doing in uh, order to get the productivity and the you know um, uh, easier way of uh, harnessing because plants have life now this is uh, science so the bbc has made uh, you know um, videos on that that how they interact how they communicate how they help each other so a uh, tree which has been cut from the head and uh, collected those leaves for moringa uh, moringa so that uh, would be of no use take it from me so they, they all that uh, they grow in the year one along with that you grow your guava your citrus your uh, you know but anyone who's educated and you know a person like you who's young and uh, willing to experiment uh, grow great fruits grow uh, things which are exceptionally good for uh, uh, you know our uh, to treat our illnesses and uh, in a very healthy way so uh, trust me when the, the when we do it as a group and uh, when we force the likes of uh, or request the likes of google or the tatas or the infosys or the <laughs> wipros that by simply making it available the clean food which is a naturally grown food to your employees at an affordable price you are supporting you see 5 lakh families decide to buy their natural produce and spend 50000 rupees per annum is the biggest business which can you can lay down the foundation for nobody can stop this uh, revolution then you know it's a, a 2500 crores and the valuation of that is 10 times it's a, you know 
So it's amazing. <laughs> so with the okay. bees, with the, with the honey, with the yeah, turmeric, okay. with the right uh, herbs and the food, banana. the millets, banana. mind blowing. Yeah, I, I just have another one question. To, uh, um, just, just, uh, just, just take it a little later. Because, yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. sure, sure. Uh, Andy, you wanted to ask something related to CSR? Yeah, uh, so good evening, everybody. First of all, uh, my compliments to Mr. Patanjali Shah and uh, Dan Chaturvedi. I think you people were born on green. Uh, should have been blue, but I think green is a better color nowadays. Uh -huh. And uh, I see that there can't be a better time than now uh, to give a kickstart or a jump start to all these initiatives <clears throat> because God has been kind enough to reboot the nature and we see the best part of it. One is closing to be a senior citizen and I haven't seen, you know, this kind of uh, the purity in uh, my surroundings uh, for the past 60 years. So this can't be a better time. And I think this is a time when all of us actually need to give the impetus to us uh, impetus to us and pressurize the government to take certain policy decisions which are within the realms of what is already existing. Right. Somebody brought out a very good point of, you know, uh, demarcating a percentage of the CSR towards environment. I believe uh, some of the bigger corporations are already advertising their carbon footprint. I know of the IT industry, I worked with them for 15 years prior to which I was, of course, a green man myself in the army. But, uh, you know, segregating a percentage of that towards environment, uh, rather than leaving it loose on whatever the organizations want to do would go a very, very long way. That is one. The second thing, uh, somebody was asking how long is it going to take, uh, you know, say the Yamuna get cleaned or the Ganga getting cleaned. My point is, it's been three months we have been down this path of COVID. And things are already clean. Yeah. I had never heard of dolphins in the Ganges. You know, probably read in some uh, childhood comics or something that Ganges had dolphins. But one is seeing that. And I think this is the right time for everybody, uh, especially the people who are interested in this. And globally also you see that, you know, there's a lot of impetus which is coming uh, towards the uh, ecology. So, first of all, compliments to all of you for doing such yeoman work with such tremendous knowledge, bringing out the advantages of nature and how, you know, they could sustain lives and those of the citizens help the poor come out of their miseries. And, uh, yeah, small steps by individuals is what is going to take. Leaving everything to the government or depending on them is not the answer. Government has lots on this plate at the moment. And if all of us could contribute, you know, our little bit towards it. Probably uh, throw those seed balls at places which are barren. And with the monsoons coming up in the next couple of months, probably we'll find that, you know, a number of those trees have taken root and uh, flourished. Uh, again, thank you so much for such an insightful discussion. And I hope you have a few more lined up. So that yes, we can we all have a participate CPA in those. And we will delve into deeper details and actually trying to transform cities into, you know, livable kind of dream cities that we all aspire to have. So I would recommend that. If, yeah. I, I can just, just recommend one thing that, uh, you know, you should come out with a few suggestions on what individuals can take. Definitely. Because let's yes. not keep depending on uh, whether Absolutely. the policy will get cleared and whether the funding will come or not. If individuals can do a little bit, I think Mr. Patanjali Jha is a living example of that. Exactly. He didn't, I'm sure he didn't wait for policy to work out his uh, mm -hmm. farm. Yeah. Thank you and uh, God bless all of you. Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Indir Pal Singh, would you like to take your question now? Hi. Uh, good evening, all of you. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's been great listening to Mr. Jha and General Chaturvedi. You know, I have a little observation and a question from General Chaturvedi. Sure. Uh, you know, one is aware of the you know, work that the Territorial Army has been doing. Yeah. Fantastic work in uh, doing you know, tree plantation, forestation, eco work, and of course, uh, their uh, work at Allahabad of cleaning the Ganga. But uh, my observation is that, you know, the Army can't keep on doing uh, 
this work is not really uh, meant for that everyone in the country looks up to the army as a last resort now general chaturvedi people have done a fantastic job in alabad my question is for how long can you do it is it it better that the army sets up few units at nodal point and trains the local corporation the panchayat the ngos the school the colleges they should all come forward get trained and carry on this work of cleaning the rivers and the army moves on from place to place or set up some centers for training the people i know jal chatra we're going to say the corporation will flop flop they won't do it we all know the mcd is the corporation don't do it well but we can't have you know the army at the position that certain places for the rest of the life so what do you say jal chatravedi yeah uh, you know you know let me confirm the ipn uh, i are both uh, you know uh, as they say in the civil service batchmates if you you say coastmates uh, he's from the navy uh, ip uh, what i want to say is first is that you know uh, i totally agree with you what you're saying uh, to uh, elaborate more on this is you know uh, the uh, when you say the army it is the territorial army and within territorial army it is the eco task force so as i brought out the eco task force uh, personnel you know 90% plus are all retired ex servicemen uh, so to that extent uh, the uh, uh, army uh, as a, is uh, not really involved as an army you know uh, having said that you know uh, when i mentioned that uh, this ganga task force is doing very well at alabad banaras and kanpur and uh, this uh, under the uh, leadership of uh, kal pande you know, who is an ex uh, uh, navy officer who you do well uh, they are uh, also involved in a in a big way in interacting with uh, the students getting them on board as uh, uh, ganga preheris uh, ganga rakshaks and uh, they are also interacting with the villagers along uh, the uh, ganga because without their uh, you know uh, support without their cooperation you know uh, we uh, will not be able to do much so this is one of the uh, basic tenets uh, of this force so uh, in effect uh, what you are saying is being done and when you know uh, these task forces are raised you know uh, uh, for the other rivers you know it will happen uh, similarly uh, what they are what the ganga what the task forces are really doing are acting as catalysts you know this needs to be understood because of uh, these qualities of sincerity hard work uh, discipline honesty you know uh, of uh, uh, dynamic uh, uh, is introduced into the system and which is then uh, followed up uh, in this manner i also want to confirm that it is not only uh, for the uh, at the ganga task force uh, is what they are doing all the other eco task forces you know they are interacting uh, with the villagers with the uh, uh, panchayats and uh, it is a collaborative uh, uh, effort uh, which is going in great thanks a lot chaturvedi uh-huh. thanks baby we have a question from uh, archana and angul and chatra all three of them so archana would you want to ask yours uh hi um, i'm archana uh, i have a query uh, actually we have a, a lake near my house okay uh, which was being taken up by hcl on through a, a csr okay it was adopted two years back what's the name uh, of the lake uh, singh sandra kodi lake it was adopted one year back mm-hmm. uh and uh previously there was some removal when they were adopted and then we uh, have raised our voice and they, then they planted 100 to 200 plants medicinal plants uh from past uh, more, uh, we have also planted or by ourselves some fruit trees on the lake before they adopted so the lake is currently under uh hcl and uh, united bay and uh, bbmp are taking care of it okay uh so uh today when uh, they are being maintained and everything when we are if watering is not there we do in inv- tell them that it has to be watered properly and everything the trees have grown up really good at 6 feet height and like that now 
uh, today when we went for a walk, we came to know with the workers that uh, those trees, all the trees which are there inside the slope and the outside slope of that walking boundary will be removed. That is around, uh, I don't know the exact count, but there are more than 300 to 400, um, both medicine, all sort of plants. So when we checked with the contractors, we came to know that uh, the government has decided to remove all the trees from the lake, around the lake. Uh, so I, I don't know what exactly to be done because already we have planted and it's being maintained and now they are removing it and the government is removing it. Yeah, what we, I would uh, suggest is that uh, you make a petition to the municipal commissioner. Uh, he's a nice man. Uh, we'll also take it up uh, with them and try to understand why they're removing it. I mean, this is absurd. And uh, so, first of all, uh, get it signed by all the local residents and uh, move a petition to the municipal commissioner. Being in the government, I'm a principal chief commissioner here. I know how the government works. Make a petition also to the chief minister, uh, along with the bureaucrat, along to the to the chief secretary, that this is absurd. And also put a PIL into uh, the high court. Let them answer. And also ask them under RTI, why are they doing it? Because this, this is a democracy. I mean... Uh, Nobody can act uh, unilaterally when the public participation has done something so good and something green. Uh, let's be, uh, you know, let's start asking questions. And uh, I'll, I'll def definitely put in a word. Uh, uh, so we asked, uh, uh, we asked the contractor and we came to know that uh, there was a case in the Hali Maru Lake uh, yes. where the band was being leached. And because of that, some com uh, committee was formed and later on they decided uh, on this issue and they have come up with the solution of removing the plants all over the leaves in Bangalore. <laughs> no, and get someone from my Indian Institute of Science, uh, uh, Preeti would know a few people and uh, make a PIL. Otherwise, uh, uh, some jokers uh, uh, together would have come and on a half-baked idea is taking such decision to petition to uh, municipal commissioner. He's a nice man. And uh, so even if there's a committee which has recommended any such absurd things, the High Court can always uh, stop this. I mean, we have to have, we, among you would be some lawyer, young lawyer, make them to file, file up the PIA. Let them at least, uh, and under the RTI, why are they removing it? The government is responsible, the government is accountable. They have to, they cannot uh, act uh, during that today. Um, so we have a question from Prashant Das. Uh, Prashant, Hello. would you like to take the question now? Sure. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. we can. Yes. Um, but thank you very much for a very insightful uh, webinar. As a researcher, I wonder um, about the positive impacts that Corona has had uh, on our environment. And of course, we are all very excited about it. Um, I'm just wondering if there have been any concerted efforts to measure, scientifically measure the effects of corona on the environment so that, um, and, and, and hopefully uh, uh, we are able to show some uh, significant positive results that could go into policy measures in the future. So um, are you aware of any uh, projects where we are actively measuring the positive impacts or is it all just anecdotal? Thank you. Um, Mr. Chai, you're going to take the question. Yeah, the simple this thing is that it is so tangible, so much all around. You know, the ozone uh, layer, which uh, had a massive hole, has uh, covered up. The river systems uh, have become better. Uh, it is for all to see, you know. Like, I have a problem with uh, so much of uh, scientific temperament. Uh, Gayatri, if you permit, I would like to recite one one minute poem of uh, Anupam Mishra in Hindi, which sure. basically sums up uh, our uh, mental state. Uh, uh, the poem, he was a great water uh, environmentalist. Uh, Louder. Worked all his life. Yeah, wo worked all his life uh, for water, uh, Mr. Anupam Mishra. And the <laughs> poem is this, Ye saikdo hazaro talab achanak shunya se nahi prakat huye the. इसके पीछे एक इकाई थी इन्हें बनवाने वालों की तो दहाई थी इन्हें बनाने वालों की 
पिछले 200 साल में इस नई किस्म की पढ़ाई पढ़ इस समाज ने इस इकाई दहाई सैकड़ा हजार को शून्य बना दिया स्टेट ऑफ अफेयर्स we very don't well need so much scientific uh, this thing it is there for all of us to see some of some of us will not change uh, yet under the circumstances the whatever is the most obvious let's do it yeah i agree and uh, thankfully i happened to uh, have listened to mr mishra once uh, live very nice thanks thank you very much thank you prashant uh just to introduce prashant he is a professor uh, in uh, switzerland and uh, he will be very shortly joining uh, i am ahmedabad as a professor in real estate finance thank you prashant for joining in yeah so we have uh, a question from uh, shweta no uh, we have a question from chatra now chatra are you still there yeah i'm here yeah. Sure. Um so uh, I I had a question to uh, both the speakers. Uh, I wanted to know if um if either of you collaborated with the forest department and um yeah how you chose the species to plant and like sir was saying about the walnut saplings and yeah I just wanted to know about that. Okay. Yeah, Chaturvedi you can answer. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, uh we uh as part of the eco task force have uh, interacted extensively with the uh, the state uh, forest uh, department uh, in various states like uh, starting from uh, jnk to himachal pradesh to uttarakhand to assam to rajasthan to uh, maharashtra mm -hmm. and of course now uh, up also mm -hmm. uh, so uh, you know uh, it's a collaborative effort and uh, uh, we interact to find out which is the best species to be uh, you know grown uh, what we found it uh, we found that you know they are also trained in a certain way and uh, they look at uh, you know forest uh, in a, in a uh, certain way uh, so even uh, the food forest idea uh, you know they could not really uh, grasp uh, in the first go and you know uh, like all uh, new things and change you know there are uh, a number of doubting thomases so uh, we had to push in some cases uh, our uh, uh, you know the new ideas uh, mm. especially this carbon sink what i have been uh, you know telling you mm. you know there was uh, they in fact one place they asked as to why are you going in for uh, you know uh, 5000 uh, uh, trees i mean touring uh, whatever when mm. you, you are required to grow only uh, 2000 and you know then uh, they said why are you, you know why are you coming so close you know uh, when <laughs> you have to grow uh, you know uh, you have to keep them uh, 10 feet apart you getting them uh, closer so we took a tiny we showed them as to you know, how a dense forest is better than a normal forest and become uh, more natural and all the advantages uh, so uh, but let me also confirm that uh, they are uh, a very sincere lot i mean they are a, a, a very educated lot and uh, there is a lot of research Uh, that is carried out especially uh, in the forest research institute in uh, uh, dehradun uh, uh, i know and uh, so very serious uh, uh, senior uh, officers with whom i interacted i found them uh, extremely uh, involved uh, in, in the forestry right right <laughs> oh, that's wonderful have, uh, chatra can we take the next question Yes, uh, we have somebody with the name Alpha Golf. I don't know if that's your real name. You can introduce yourself, and uh, then we have a question from Vanki. Uh, hi. Yeah. Hi, hi. Sorry, my name is Asim Gro. These are just my initials, and that goes as default on these Zoom calls. Sorry about that. So I just had a couple of comments, and I had a question for Mr. Jha. Uh, 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 one thing that I had noticed uh, many years ago. was uh, this bakhtiyar kaki mazar in mehroli uh, there there's a bauli there which was full of plastic trash water bottles and all sorts of stuff and what the locals did was just clean it up a local councilor just took that and said we'll just clean it up during this dengue time and think dengue time and things as soon as that was cleaned up 
the water table rose and for the last few years it's had sparkling water in the bowl it was just magical so there are there are these things that exist and we obviously don't look after them enough and and this urbanization is also kind of you know comes with its uh, uh problems of not kind of, of ruining our water tables and ruining our resources uh so that that is just as an aside that i just wanted to mention here but what i would like to actually ask you is what is your take as an environmentalist on the once much talked about national river linking project um, uh, being in the government <laughs> still i like can tell you that it is absurd uh, okay i, I thought as much but i'd like to hear more from you please no, i don't mind you like uh, beyond the point uh, it's mother nature for, for me nature is god you know every religion says that uh, nature is the visible form of god and uh, yet we hardly do anything about it even if you are an atheist uh, take it as uh, nature is most intelligent no time better than uh, current time when it uh, shows you our uh, real worth we have no business to be doing this it's it's absurd the rivers are already you know interlinked and uh, what we need to de- do is to augment uh, and maintain the water level which these rivers once uh, had what general chaturvedi said we saw right um, all along that you know those those sal trees i am absolutely virulent and uh, i cry when i visit a place like uh, amarkantak and dindori i i genuinely request any of you who's uh, who has uh, environmental cause uh, uh, as uh, in your heart please go and visit these origin of these rivers I mean, you you would cry in shame because some joker granted some mining rights in Dindori, which allowed a viral, which uh, finished the entire Sal uh, forest. In that, it's like a you know a land on Mars, not a speck of grass. This is absurd. So we are playing havoc with uh, citizens. We are playing havoc with river system as the courts have upheld. that rivers have their own entity please for god's sake civilians cannot handle it as priti rightly said uh, hand over these uh, you know uh, rivers and especially at its origin to institutions like uh, eco task force they would and uh, good corporates good citizens uh, join that everything will change um, thank you very much sir thank you and and as far as eco task force and general chaturvedi this thing is concerned i think this clean ganga project taking on is an extremely brave and gutsy uh, thing to take on because uh, the polluting industries are actually a political lobby so you are actually fighting the decision making political lobby when you are actually trying to get them stopped or get them mend their ways uh, or get them kind of uh, follow the new pollution control norms so hats off sir this is this is really really brave and this is a really uh, highly commendable is actually a understatement uh, that you've taken this on thank you very much thank you thank you thank you asim um we have a question from uh, vanki and uh, preeti rao we'll take that and after that we'll want to close that because i think we are uh really overshooting the time limits hello banki yeah, yeah good evening this is banki now uh, uh, what i've gathered from this very informative and educative talk till now is that uh, and what uh, andy also had to put in that finally it is nature uh, we've seen that during covid 19 3 months lockdown that nature has uh, taken its own course and the ganges is clean and the environment is clean and you know so frankly speaking we really do not have to put in much effort to get the environment getting back and recovering it is we have to stop polluting it and uh, that is how i understand it and uh, so as far as that is concerned the utilization of csr because we are a developing country and the industrial development is going to take place we cannot compromise on that pollute pollutants are going to be there whether uh, environment or uh, whether the river gets polluted so what i want to understand is that uh, the csr the csr funding can be diverted more towards not polluting the environment and the rivers 
now how do we achieve that because the industrial development has to take place what i want to understand is that how do we stop polluting the rivers and the environment when the industries are going to uh, develop as we have to generate employment where do they go, where do the pollutants go if they do not go to the river or are they are not spread in the environment now how do we handle this uh, i would like to understand that yeah should i should i uh, okay uh, mr <laughs> patanjali after you <laughs> okay yeah so uh, uh, part of it is right some development happens at the cost of environment but uh, there are a lot of uh, development which can take place uh, where we are not in conflict with nature this is what we are talking about we are talking of a 5 trillion dollar economy we are talking of a quadrupling of income of farmers uh this is a new system which is more productive which is uh, you know no more tilling of soil that itself uh, along the river system what uh, uh, rama was saying uh, she is an, she uh, she has done research on that uh, river ions you know the buffer uh, on uh, the sides of the river that also if we are able to establish uh, it, it, it is far more productive what uh, jil chaturvedi was mentioning of the vetiver see how simple this humble grass is it multiplies uh, 10 times within uh, a year minimum and it stabilizes uh, within 2 uh, months and 1 uh, square meter of vetiver does 15 kg of uh, carbon sequestration the more soil uh, the more carbon the soil has the more productive it is it uh, uh, you know puts the water inside the uh, soil so uh, and uh, so over a period of time what they have started uh, with an initial this thing of 1 and 1/2 crore has become 15 crore is doing currently 1400 tons of carbon sequestration every year it will multiply by 7 uh, times even if they don't add it within 5 years of time it will cross 1 lakh uh, tons fantastic so nature is most bountiful we need to uh, understand that as a policy if uh, policy makers don't understand uh, this we can understand you see the, uh, the the consumers have a huge uh, you know power and the responsibility and the accountability if we can drive down, down this uh, point that uh, all development all your wealth creation all your greed everything would remain here you are uh, subject you know we get one illness of a cancer finished one covid finished all this can be saved only when we become responsible and where our practices are now regenerative sustainable would not do um priti you had a question would you like to take that now uh, sorry uh, okay, can i uh, just take a minute with uh, vanki no, please yeah, sorry you know uh, vanki uh, what i want to uh, say is uh, yes you know uh, uh, development has to take place uh, so what do we do with the uh, uh, the pollutants uh, that's a, a good question uh, to begin with Uh, i think uh, we need to uh, integrate the whole thing you know uh, if you want to start producing something yes and what are the what are the impact and how do we mitigate that uh, impact so right from uh, that world go we uh, and the world is moving towards that you know uh, like uh, say chlorofluorocarbons so that they you know got banned you know in our uh, emissions of the refrigerator and uh, uh, germany is now you know going to uh, put a a uh, few uh, air tax on uh, its uh, flights uh, to ensure that you know uh, uh, when uh, they get more uh, aware of uh, what they're doing and uh, there was a, uh, a professor who uh, uh, who talked about circular uh, economy uh, at the world uh, uh, economy uh, forum in switzerland a very uh, talked about that and the thing is produced and then you know uh, it goes uh, into waste and goes back into uh, uh, the mother earth and then again it uh, comes about so this whole thing you know uh, would also uh, come by and by uh, my my take is that uh, the humanity uh, is re- recognizing uh, the importance of uh, uh, nature uh, and uh, the adverse uh, uh, you know effects of uh, polluting them polluting it rather and uh, Uh, the steps uh, that we can take to ensure uh, that uh, though this uh, adverse effects are uh, mitigated uh, and uh, prevented in uh, uh, some measure thank you that was
very informative and educative uh, uh, talk and uh, one feels motivated after listening to both of you uh, thank you great thank you uh, preeti uh, i think with your question you want to end this session please go okay. ahead yeah uh, good evening uh, patanjali ji ji and general chaturvedi it was wonderful listening to both of you now uh, i have a question for general chaturvedi yeah please uh, yeah uh, i took up a project in bihar to again for the plantation next to bank of ganga now uh, this didn't happen because of lockdown or whatever reason but the project is still on now uh, Yeah, I was trying to do it only for few kilometers, but then this place is so prone to a flood. I have seen the soil erosion for almost eight meters to ten meters. You know, uh, so before I go to that level, I was just thinking I'll start doing in the plain side and all that. But if I have to complete the whole thing, I felt you know. Uh, it's good to have army with us to complete the whole thing it's uh, it's a hercules task and uh, the project what i took up is only on a volunteering basis of all the citizens there and they were all ready now the thing is uh, it's a hercules task and uh, i was wondering you know uh, it will be really great if uh, army could pitch into it and it's a beautiful small district in bihar and uh, I mean, I I feel it will be really nice, but I don't know how do we go about for that. Uh, Preeti, uh, what what I can do is uh, provide you with the mobile number of uh, Colonel Amit Pandey, uh, who is yeah. the commanding officer of this uh, Ganga Task Force. He is located at yeah, Ganga, and uh, yeah, uh, I think Gayatri should be uh, yeah. so we can actually route it through the uh, prakriti channel because this is very much one of our focus areas as well and we can uh, because we are exactly trying to do the same thing through all the uh, right authorities we are trying to get the permits and make this officially done so uh, even general chaturvedi would agree on this that in order to set up the eds in that district we we'll need to have permission from the central government right so, absolutely uh, what what uh, you know Uh, Preeti, you can route it through uh, uh, Gayatri and uh, have a word with uh, uh, Colonel Pandey. Uh, I mean, uh, yeah. Okay. He would, uh, you know, address the uh, issue with the uh, with the government and uh, probably get a eco task force to do it for you. Or mm -hmm. uh, he he may uh, provide you with some uh, expertise in terms of uh, vegetable yeah. plantation. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah. But what I want to confirm to you that uh, this vetiver uh, uh, is, uh, you know, is the byword is uh, you know uh, something uh, incredible. Uh, once you uh, plant right. that, uh, and Mr. Jha can help you with some vetiver slips also. You know? Yes, yes. I'm already in touch with them. So I've already sold over vetiver logs. I've been yeah. trying to so, you know, uh, these kind of. And and you can also you can also ask him as to how he's done it. What he did was. He he yeah. planted uh, you know uh, the uh, slips uh, and uh, through a mat actually uh, you know, that the jute mm -hmm. matting uh, you know uh, kind of uh, that uh, they call it I think agro agro screens the green agro screen so and then I told him we can go in for uh, the more uh, the jute ones uh, so and through them the vegetables were planted and they broke through uh, the uh, I don't know those uh, agro screens and. But they were held in place also by them initially, and uh, mm -hmm. within a matter of months they were able to grow and hold the soil, and there was no erosion. Yeah. So this I want to confirm. Oh, uh, so that's the best way. I think you uh, get in uh, touch with Gayatri and mm -hmm. put you through the Prakriti model. Yeah. Amit. Yeah. Yeah. yeah sure. I hope I have answered I your question. Forward to the number. Yeah, I know it's a. <laughs> Thank But you. I Thank you, Tony. For uh, the effort that you are making. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Yeah. Uh, Thank, Thank you. you so much, Preeti. And uh, I would like to now conclude this session. Uh, Thank you so much, General Chaturvedi. And thank you so much, Mr. Patanjali Jha. You have been really sharing some great insights. And I am personally motivated now to start my own, you know, uh, 
urban farming thing it is not just a you know urban farming lecture it is more of a motivation to you know believe in the nature's way of growing the way nature grows so that is a very different sort of insight that actually i think all of our audience would have gained through this today and we'll also be making it live on uh, youtube and it's already running live on facebook we will be making it live um, i mean the streaming will be uh, again displayed on youtube channel and uh, we want to continue this as a series because we want to see that this whole concept of sustainable land use doesn't uh, you know take the back seat when it comes to sustainability we are here to mainstream sustainability and sustainable land use is one very important topic that we want to touch upon and uh, since most of us are living in urban areas and in the covid 19 most of us are actually understanding how important it is to make our cities more livable you know so uh, thank you so much for all the information and uh, best practices shared and uh, please uh, let me know if you have any specific suggestions in making this community grow further because we saw some great interactions i couldn't take all the questions but uh, we could take some of the priority ones that we got so uh, any concluding thoughts and messages from you both first chaturdhi uh, sir <laughs> yeah please yeah always a pleasure to uh, share as i say it's a privilege to know him and uh, as i say i reiterate that uh, either practice uh, this obvious or perish there is uh, no other way and together we can uh, make all the difference uh, and we have the you know there are many very good initiative uh, from the government uh, like what i talked about so there is a need to uh, come back focus on that uh, till government uh, you know comes back to that uh, let's do it why stop <laughs> so uh, together we can uh, make all the difference this is uh, what i feel and uh, uh, leaders like uh, janal chaturvedi from um, uh, uh, something who is uh, uh, so humble and for the gigantic work uh, that they do it's all pull in our uh, knowledge source our active uh, support uh, to all such great institution through his good offices so again now uh, we can support the uh, eco task force in many ways thank you general chaturvedi yeah, yeah. Uh, you know uh, gayatri i just uh, support what you said you know uh, the way uh, nature restores itself it helps uh, they just bicha do bed is uh, Uh, is uh, in, can you just mute yourself uh, all those who are not speaking please yeah so i was saying that you know i just want to uh, end by narrating you know uh, an incident uh, this ganga task force uh, they cleaned up uh, a nala uh, which was uh, actually a mess you know it was flowing through uh, behind their uh, living area so they they took it up uh, first and within 2 months not only was uh, you know, the water clean which was I mean, it was flowing it was clean but more importantly there were you know, tortoises which had uh, come to that area you know uh, various uh, uh, birds had come back uh, uh, into the area you know uh, one of the uh, persons asked about uh, bees there were bees uh, you know buzzing around uh, Uh, in that uh, area so uh, the whole ecosystem came uh, about uh, by itself it just needed to be cleaned up that's all what asim said that they you know just clean up the bali and you know uh, the waters uh, come back there so uh, it doesn't require too much that's what i uh, want to say you know uh, the you. nature is very strong it can heal itself you uh, know very very uh, soon and uh, we should uh, just make some efforts Uh, towards not uh, you know uh, polluting it and if you polluted it to depollute it uh, to begin with that's sure. all thank you uh, once again uh, gayatri and uh, thank you bad uh, bad bad thank you so much thank thanks to you both again and thanks to all the people who made this session so interactive and engaging uh, looking forward to seeing you in the next series soon again thank you for joining cloud chats bye 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 good night bye bye good night, good night. <laughs>